The team said OpenAI have been busy. Last week, they released their latest video model, which was Sora 2, which really shook the world. And we have been hearing great things about it from the industry. And this week, today, really, they had the dev day in which they released even more cool features. And in fact, they released a brand new tool, which is Agent Builder. Since it was a dev day, a lot of announcements were focused on developer tools. But two things that really caught everybody's attention was, number one, now you can actually talk to different apps directly within ChatGPT. And second, as I mentioned earlier, the Agent Builder tool. The big question which everybody's asking is, how does their Agent Builder tool stand in comparison to the more established Agent Builder tools like NADN and Zapier? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cover quite a detailed walkthrough of their Agent Builder tool. And then I will also showcase three or four different examples of the integration of tools and how you guys can go ahead and use it. All right, let's jump right into the Agent Builder. All right, so I am in platform.openai.com and on the left hand side, this is the new Agent Builder that they have launched. So you have the capability to create a new agent or a workflow from scratch, or you can also use the existing ones to get inspired. So you can click on any one of these and you can immediately see how the workflow is. So what we're going to do is we're going to start something from scratch. So I'm going to click on this and this is how the interface looks like, right? So on the left hand side, they have provided the core component. So which is the end, the start and the agent. And then we have some of the tools that are available. So before we spend time on the actual agent, I want to spend time on these individual tools because I think these are very interesting. So the first one here is the file search tool. When you think of file search tool, this is really around querying a vector store for relevant information. In other words, this is the one which you would use to create rack based agent or retrieval augmented generation. The cool thing that they have done is actually they have provided a capability to create a vector store out of the box directly in, 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 in their agent builder. Now, people who are not familiar with vector store, these are specialized databases which will store embeddings. Embeddings are nothing but deep vector representation of your unstructured data so that the large language models can have a easier understanding of it, right? It's pretty easy to create this. You click on the create button, give it a name, some, something like this. And then here, I'm just gonna copy the, uh, the ID and then I'm gonna attach the files that I need, right? So let's say I'm, I've downloaded some Google papers. I'm just gonna click on open. And what it's going to do is it's going to now break it into different chunks. We don't have to worry about that. What it is really doing is converting these files into embeddings and storing it for us on, on our behalf. So the idea is if you want to ground your agent so that it does not hallucinate, you absolutely need to have something like this to build a rack based agent. So I'm just going to attach it. Now I have my vector store ready, which I should be able to use when I'm actually building an agent, right? So that's the first piece of information. You can go ahead and search for it and it should show the vector store that we just created. So that is the first really cool tool. The second one, which I really like as well is guardrails, right? What it does is it provides you multiple options for you to ensure that your agent is protected from being hacked and is protected from being malicious. So let's look into each one of these. Now, the first one is PII. This is where it allows you to detect sensitive personal data so that it blocks the request before it reaches the model, right? So this is where like someone is trying to trick you to get your credit card information out of your model. Someone is trying to trick you to get your driver's license information from your model. You can actually like identify that and if someone is sharing that PII information and really block it. So some of the commonly used ones across the world are these. And then what they have also done, which is a great thing is they have given like country specific ones. This is day one. So I'm assuming they're gonna continuously improve and add more but you can already see they have for US, UK, Spain, Italy, Poland, Singapore, Australia, India, Finland, and I'm sure they're gonna continuously add more details to it, right? So that's really cool from a PII perspective. The second one is moderation. I think we all understand what this is. So you want to flag text containing things that are not really cool. So you automatically stop the model to interact with such kind of text, right? So you can see the different categories which are already here. So you don't have to build this logic. The logic is automatically generated through this guardrail. The third one is jailbreak. Now, this is a very cool feature which has not been talked about much as AI systems and systems in general are developing. The way these are getting hacked are also are becoming much more, the hackers are becoming much more smarter. And this is where hackers now have a way to hack the Gen AI or generative AI tools using prompt injection or role playing or even system prompt overrides. And this is where now you have the capability to automatically detect if there is a potential for jailbreak, right? So it will flag an attempt 
just by adding this as a guardrail. Right? So it's a pretty cool one as well. Now the last one is hallucination, as I had mentioned before. If you have created a vector data store, you can actually add that. And then this will allow your model to be completely grounded in your own data and thereby not hallucinating. So really cool feature out there, right? So these are the two important tools. And then the most important tool is a model context protocol, right? So this is where you can invoke an MCP tool as part of your agent. And let's look into what are the different MCP tools which OpenAI has made available. So right out of the box, they have directly made these MCP tools. They have from the Google ecosystem and then Microsoft ecosystem. And then they also have these from other developers. They have Shopify, Zapier, Played from a payment perspective, Square, again, from a payment perspective, Stripe and PayPal. And then they have also provided the capability for you to add and connect to any MCP server when, as, as, as soon as you have the authentication access token and the API key, right? So this is a really cool one. Now I want to focus on Zapier a little bit because I think this is where they are not looking at Zapier as a competition, but they're looking at Zapier as an ecosystem, right? Zapier has been there as a, as a workflow or even like an automation tool for such a long time that they have really matured in terms of having connections to multiple apps. You can already see that they have connections to over 8,000 different apps. So if I click on the get API key, it directly takes me into the place where I will be able to connect to the existing tools that Zapier has. So they've made it very easy. I can click on this and you can see that I already have a lot of these different options for me to connect to. So let's say that I want to connect to Google Sheets, right? So this is where these are the, all the different things that I will be able to do as part of Google Sheets. Now Zapier has already negotiated and worked with Google on this. These are the events and things that you will be able to do when you're invoking a Google Sheet MCP through the agent which you're building in Agent Builder, right? So you can look up, you can create a spreadsheet column, create a spreadsheet row, et cetera, et cetera. So what I'm going to do is just add this. So I'm adding all the Google Sheet tools available via Zapier into this, right? So I've already added Google Calendar, Gmail, Google Docs, and now Google Sheet. Now, if I go back here and I click on connect, what's going to happen is because I've added those tools, all of those tools are now suddenly available as part of my MCP, right? So when you're building the agent, you can simply connect to this one and then you can provide like authentication or have none as the authentication if you're only building it for yourself, right? So these are the main tools that the agent builder has. And I think that these are the most core and fundamental tools already made available on day one, right? So now it's only going to increase. Now some of the other things that, you know, for you to look at is logical tools. It's very basic. If this happens, then run this particular agent, else run this agent. Let's say you're kind of building like multi agent or workflow, you could do that. Similarly, you have a while loop, you have a user approval. So if the user approves and run this, so you can connect, connect different agents. If I drop this agent here, I can connect this agent to this. And then if I drop this agent here, then I can connect this agent to this, right? It's very simply the different workflows. The last piece is, is around data. So they have provided this transform one, which is basically if you are in a workflow and if the output of the previous node cannot become an input to, of the next node because the output is in JSON and this one expects something in the form of an object, this is where you would use like a data transformation function, right, or nodes. I think they've thought through this very well in terms of all the different op types of nodes to be made available. And again, as I'm mentioning, like today's day one of the release, I'm sure they're going to keep working on this. Now that we have seen all of these tools, let's focus on the agent node. So we start with the start node and here you can just define you know, how the agent is going to receive the input and if there are certain global variables that you want to define upfront, right? So global variables would be something like a variable that you could use across the workflow that doesn't require any changes. So we'll keep it as is for the moment and then we'll get into the agent. Now, as soon as you click on the agent, you have the capability to define the name. So I'm just going to name something based on a workflow that I've thought through. Then let's look into some of the other things here, right? If you see here, you have the option of including the chat history. So think about it as the memory, which N810 you know, provides as a sample, simple kind of a memory. And then you have the capability to select all from all of the OpenAI's model. Now, this is good, but at the same time, this is where you're only looking at the OpenAI models only. Now, I don't know if they will include other models in the future, but right now you are limited to be only using OpenAI models. Then you can define the reasoning effort Obviously, it also relates to the tokens and stuff like that. You, if you define minimum, minimal, then, you know, the tools option will also get reduced. Then if you define like low, medium, high, you will see like more tools showing up, right? So for the moment, I'm just going to keep it at low. 
And then here are the tool options, right? So that means just so the agent needs to have a brain that is the model. It needs to have a memory that we are saving as including chat history. And then it needs to have access to tools, right? So the tools which are available here are the MCP server, the file search, the web search, the code and interpreter. And then you can also write your own custom local function, right? Web search is something which we can, let's look into it. So here you can have, you can provide some more details, like what kind of websites do you want to want it to search? Do you want to restrict it to a particular country, particular time zone, context size, and all of those things, right? So we'll have, keep everything for, for default right now. You can also have the different types of output format. You can have like the model parameters to be verbose and summary and all of these things. And then you can see some of the other kind of options available here. Now, I want you to focus a little bit around the capability of output, right? So there are three options available. One is text, the other one is JSON, and that's where if you want the agent to spit out JSON as an output, which can then be used as an input for another agent, you can absolutely do that. And the last piece is really cool, which they did is widget, right? So let's click on this and show you what widgets are all about. So what you can do is you can basically go here and start defining something like a design of a widget, right? For your benefit, they have already given examples of what a widget could look like. So the idea is if you want your agent to respond to you in a widget format, you could go ahead and describe a widget here. For example, a newsletter style widget that says AI with Surya as a banner and then shows like the top five news with a very small paragraph on each news. So I want to display something like this. So I'll click on this and it's going to generate like a widget that I can then use as part of the output of my agent, right? So that is, that is something which is pretty cool here. While it is developing, we'll get into this and look into more aspects. Now, here's the workflow that I've thought for us, right? So what I want to do is I want this agent to go out there on the web and research all the latest AI news that has happened in the last like 24 hours or three days or whatever, and then basically select the top five and generate a, a newsletter for me. So that's what I want to do. Here is a prompt that I'm going to give so we can expand it, right? You are an AI newsletter creator. Your task is to search the internet via your web access tool to find the top AI news stories from the last 24 hours. Write a concise summary of each news item suitable and put the output in a widget. So now I'm describing that I want the output in a widget. Let's say if I don't give this, right? And then I just save it. What I could also do is I could actually use this prompt option to make it a much more effective prompt so that it automatically becomes detailed. So you're using an agent to make the agent better. So I'm just gonna wait for it to generate that. And then once once it is done, so now you can see that it has expanded my prompt, right? So here it's also giving an example that these are the, this is the sort of output format. Now I don't want the output in a JSON format, so I'm gonna delete this. I absolutely want the format to be more, more structured in, in this case, right? So I'm gonna do that and then I'm gonna just put it as text and then hit on preview, right? So what's gonna happen is it is gonna ask me to start typing. So I'm gonna just initiate the conversation and let's see what it comes back with. So the idea is it should start researching and that's where it's asking, it's confirming, right? Want me to pull up top five in the past 24 hours, any preferences on regions? So I'm gonna say North America, let's focus on Google, Nvidia, OpenAI. So just some ideas. I just want to show the functionality. We don't have to limit it, but just to showcase what are the options out there. So it, it's going to start working on it. We have given it access to the web tool, I believe. So it's going to it's going to look into that and come back. So at any point in time, if you're in a doubt, and I think we didn't give it the access to web search, so we should add that and then go back and kind of start again. In the meanwhile, let's go back to our widgets. So there you go. So it has created this, this widget as I had asked. Now what I can do is I can save this so I can download this. Okay, so it's continuing to research. It's taking a bit time because it needs to also filter out the companies and also the dates, et cetera, which is great, right? So I also provided some reasoning capability. That's why it's looking into these things. So I think it has done its job and these are the top five AI stories that it has generated, which is fine. It has also given the links. Now you can see that this is just a normal conversation because what we, have, we had asked was to give the response in a text format. Now here is where we can change it to a widget format. And now what I can do is I can ask it to generate this and just add the output to the widget, right? So we can do that as well. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna change the, the instruction here and just keep it simple, write the concise summary of each new suitable and put the output in a widget. I'm gonna save it. And in the output format, I'm gonna add the widget that we had just downloaded, right? So this is the widget AI with Surya. It looks like this. And the idea is it's gonna 
hopefully replace this with this. So again, we'll hit on preview and type latest AI news. Okay. So it's going to do the same thing. It's going to research the web, generate the top five stories, and then hopefully this time we'll see how it comes. It should be generating this in the form of a widget. So more kind of embedded format of how the output should look like. I think it's, it has done its job and this is how the output now looks like, right? So it is in the form of a widget that we had asked instead of a, a normal text. And then the idea is once you publish this, if this agent will become available for you in production where you will be able to take this as a quote, right? So I'm going to hit publish. You can give it a name. So I've done one before and once you've published it, you can actually look into the code. You can have this as the SDK. So you have the entire code available or you can actually like now have the chat kit, which is where the widget that we had shown can now be directly integrated into your website. And this is the coolest feature that I was talking about. All right. So that was on the on the agent builder. Now we will get into the second aspect, which is the integration within ChatGPT. You know, what we saw today in, in the in the dev day was a direct integration of different apps. So the fastest way to look at this is these are all the different apps that are already available, which are integrated. So let's say that I want to ask Canva to build me a presentation on the latest development of AI in September 2025. Okay. So let's see what, what happens. The idea is instead of ChatGPT building the presentation, I want Canva to build the presentation for me, right? And I had connected my Canva account to this and that's, I think it is, it is doing a good job and it's already starting to build. And you can see the, the response time is pretty good and it is already collating the information and working on the presentation. What you could also do is you can, in the meantime, ask another app. So let's say I want to ask Figma, create a design for a mobile workout app. It could, it would do that as well once, once it is done, the Canva presentation. And you can see that there are two apps which are now selected. And that, that's the cool thing about it. You could also get the output of the first one and then use that as an input for the second one. So I'll click on the next one, but let's see what it has created. There you go. So AI yeah, advan advancement, September 2025. You can see Agentic AI is the center stage, which we all know. Multimodal, Google Gemini 2.5. I think it's fantastic, right? And you can then open it directly from here. You can open it in Canva and continue. And while we were doing it, it has also generated a flow for the workout app in Figma. So you can see that how quickly things are going to be interconnected and apps are going to be interconnected. And soon you will be able to keep all of this context in memory. All right. Those were the main things that were announced today in the DevOps event of OpenAI. I think we kind of covered all the different aspects there. It is very clear that it is only going to improve and there are a lot of different options and features that could get added. So the possibilities from here are endless. I'm hoping that you enjoyed today's discussion. If you have any comments and any questions, please do let me know. Please leave it in the comment section. And if you like this and if you enjoyed and you got some value out of this, please do hit the like button and, and do subscribe so that you can keep updated on this. Thank you very much and I will see you in the next one.